now we're recording. Here we are. There we are. Number one. We're number one, the number one episode. Right now, you might think these guys will never be trending. These guys will be nothing. But our whole lives, I've been told, you're a walk-on. You're a walk-on. Not just about the walk-on, but I'm here with this guy, the X Factor. Pumpy. And I'm here with this guy. This is this is funny. where we're at. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's starting to get dark here in Oregon, but it's a beautiful night. It's 9 10. 9 oh, wow. That's a new time. I haven't heard of that one. Niner. Did I catch a Niner in there? Are we calling from a walkie talkie? Beautiful night. Um, but yeah, we're going to get started. This is our first episode. We had our IG live earlier. Now we're on Zoom and recording this. Hopefully, we're going to be able to get this going onto the YouTube. The YouTube. YouTube? The, the YouTube sounds the official. YouTube. The YouTube. Because did you know it was the Facebook? I know you're young, but there was never, when I was in college, you had to type in thefacebook.com. I watched the Facebook. movie Social Network. Yeah. And I learned about that, actually. Yeah, it had to be thefacebook.com. So a little fun fact out there. Well, welcome to episode one. I'm Coach Miner, the B Money Grant Miner, part of this operation that we got going on, and I'm with this guy. I'm the other guy. My name is Pontelis. It's probably the hardest name you'll ever have to pronounce, if not one of the hardest, probably the hardest. I'm a walk-on at DePaul. I'll just go into the whole introduction right now. So, walk-on at DePaul University. Uh, you probably know if you're watching this, you probably know what a walk-on is, but if you do not, that means I am a non-scholarship player. Um, I am not receiving a scholarship, but I'm a member of the team. Now, that is extremely, there's a lot of work that's required into it, right? And the people that are in the realm of college basketball understand that. I'm a real hardworking guy, and I take a lot of pride in that. I love college basketball. Um, I'm known as college basketball's hype man. And going into my senior year, I still hold that title that I got my freshman year from hyping the world up, hyping my teammates up, getting a lot of recognition from just being a big ball of energy all the time. I don't play that much. I don't care that I don't play that much. What I do care is that I'm contributing. So I go out there, I cheer my teammates on, and I got a lot of recognition from that, which is amazing. It's very humbling. And, um, you know, I'm just a kid from Michigan City, Indiana, a small town, and now I'm at DePaul University playing basketball, the sport I love, doing something I love, and hey, now I said, you know what, me and B-Money, we got to hop on this podcast and we got to shed some light, first of all, positivity to the world, and second of all, shed some light upon what it's like to be a walk-on, what it was like to be a walk-on, because we've got a current walk-on and a former walk-on. We're going to give you guys the insights of everything, so we're really looking forward to that. College basketball. If you're a college basketball fan, you're in the right place. If you're an NBA fan, you're in the right place. If you are needing a little positivity, a little energy, a little pep in your step, you're in the right place. Thank you guys for tuning in. Episode one, here we go. Let's get after it. Let's go. I'm Coach Miner, the B money portion of this thing. Um, I was a walk-on at University of Portland back in the early 2000s, dating myself, but I'm younger than John Stockton, and I did play when we beat Gonzaga. So that's something I had to work into the first five minutes of this podcast, right? Because anytime I talk to people, that's something I want to just share because that was an incredible experience to get to play at Gonzaga and walk out of there victorious, victorious. So rare. They don't lose very often there at home. So that was an incredible experience. Now I'm going to coach college basketball, living my dream, going to do what I love to do every day. And I saw this guy when I went to the PK-80 in Portland. I was like, this guy's a legend. I can already tell. And this was before he even blew up, before he took over college basketball. Um, just because he knows his role, he accepts his role. And that's why I'm thankful to be a part of this thing with you. And Ponte Lees is a legend and going to be a legend and not just with his basketball but with everything he's doing so i'm thankful to be a part of this thing and i'm ready to go i'm fired up i'm excited to be here and we're gonna get going man so looking forward to talking just talking hoops talking all things that we can get into so if you guys are here you're in the right place let's get it going let's go with uh what do we got what do you want to talk about here first p well, uh, I think that we can go just to, just to start things off. You want to go right into our quotes because we have a lot of things that we always talk about, right? And this is episode one. 
we're going to kind of bring these into all the episodes and also accept feedback, right? Because we're starting. And, um, you know, even, even earlier, we got an uh, Instagram live and we learned a lot. We got a lot of feedback and uh, it's been helpful. You want to hop into quotes and what they mean yeah, to us? Go. Let's go. Let's go with our analogy or metaphor, right? So I talked about this one earlier tonight and I think it's so powerful that you don't split the firewood when you're cold. Wood heat was my source of heat growing up. So I grew up in a house where if you didn't have the firewood split, you were going to get cold. And in the summer, it's 100 degrees in Southern Oregon. But that doesn't mean you don't split the firewood because you can't wait until winter because in the fall, it rains. So you don't split the firewood when you're cold. You got to prepare. You got to get ready. Even though it's 100 degrees and the lake, we used to float down the river. There's times I had to pass up on things like that because I had to split the firewood. And my friends all had, and I'm blessed now I live in a house where we can just turn up the thermometer. And, but when I grew up, I learned at a young age, you don't split the firewood when you're cold. You got to prepare, you got to plan ahead. I love that. I love that. That's extremely powerful. And like I said earlier, there, there's a few things that go into that. It, it's preparation, right? understanding, hey, I have to cut this firewood so that I can have it later on. Then there's sacrifice, actually going out there, cutting that firewood with the understanding that, hey, maybe this isn't the most enjoyable thing right now, but I'm going to be thanking myself later. And then the enjoyment portion of it. That's a huge portion of it as well. So that's a very powerful metaphor. Those three things are extremely important. And what you were talking about with the river and water actually goes into my metaphor, ties into it kind of perfectly. Although my, my choice of body of water was the sea but you can really take anything. How about this one, everybody? Ladies and gentlemen, a smooth sea never made a skillful sailor. A smooth sea never made a skillful sailor. How many times have you gone into a situation? For example, if you go into the water and you're a sailor, you just got your license and you can go out there and set forth and sail the seven seas. You think it's gonna be easy? You think it's going to be easy to go all the way across and make your way to the other side? It's not going to be. And if you think it is, you're probably not going to make it across. Preparation. Like B-Money was talking about earlier. Preparation. You have to put 100% of what you are doing constantly into your craft. Not everybody's a sailor. The sailor part is just a metaphor. For example, we're walk-ons. B-Money was a former walk-on. I'm a current walk-on. There is no way. There's no way that we would have made it to where we made it to if we listened to what other people were saying. I'm a whole five foot nine, right? We're probably maybe not fitting the profile of what most people think of basketball players to be. We don't care. We never care. Because I know who I am. B Money knows who he is. We know who we are. And we said, hey, we're going to go out here and we're going to take on basketball. And if we're going to do it, we're going to do it seriously. I'm going to be in the gym. My friends are going to be canoeing, kayaking, boating whatever the case may be, I'm going to be in the gym. I'm going to shoot my free throws. I'm going to get my dribbling in. I'm going to run on the treadmill. I'm going to do all that stuff. All of that and all the sacrifice that we put in together, right, uniformly made us who we are today and put us in the positions that we are allowed to be in today. Speaking to you the way we're speaking right now in positions that we can truly understand and testify to. So a smooth sea never made a skillful sailor. Look at adversity, stare it in the face and say, you're mine. You're nothing. I'm going to get right over you and I'll see you on the other side. So important to have a little adversity to overcome, to navigate, to be able to see something and see not why is this happening to me, but what is this trying to teach me? Not why is this happening to me? Not why is this storm? Why? But what is this trying to teach me? It's teaching to be better. And I love doesn't matter, get better, right? And that applies to so many things. You won the championship, doesn't matter, get better. You finished last in the conference, doesn't matter, get better. I love that saying because it applies to anything. What's happened in the past is in the past. And what's going to happen in the future, you have complete control over. So the first thing you should be trying to focus on is getting better, get better. So it doesn't matter what's happened whether you've won or lost, whether you've been up or down, get better. So key, so important, so, so, so important. And that ties into what we always say, and it ties into one of our catchphrases of the show. If you're going to walk, walk on, right? If you're going to do it, go forward. And we make that little play on words because we're walk-ons, and hey, if you're going to walk, walk on. It sounds great. But if you really think about it, if you're going to walk, 
walk on. Really think about that for a second. I can talk about it forever, but I'm going to leave this one up to you all. Think about that. Think about it. I, I think that's so important for sure. I love that saying. So if you're taking notes, if you're trying to take away some nuggets of wisdom from this, there's two. You don't split the firewood when you're cold. You got to prepare. You got to plan ahead. And a smooth sea never made a skillful sailor. Never. It's never happened. Because if you're just cruising along and no, no, everybody loves a story that has a little adversity. Nobody's, everybody's rooting for the person that's had to overcome. Maybe it's height. Some of us are vertically challenged. Some of us are small. Some of us are big, too big to be good at some things that you have to be small to be good at. So my thought is for sure, I agree with you. I think that that's adversity is what create. It's easy to be a good teammate when you're winning. It's easy to be a good teammate when everything's going right. But what do you do? How do you handle the adversity? The storm's coming. How do you handle that? And that's so true that if you only had the smooth sailing, you wouldn't be as skillful of a sailor. No question about it. Thank you for sharing that one. So that's two good ones. Don't split the firewood when you're cold. And a smooth sea never, never made a skillful sailor. Write that down. Take notes. Next section. Here we go. We, on the live, if you watch the live, you'd know that usually we move right into trivia. Usually we'd know that you know, that I know that you know that next we would go in to the scavenger hunt, the scavenger hunt, the scavenger hunt. But since you're on the podcast, you're not hearing that piece. So we're going to go to the quote of the show. That's what you're going to know after we go to the quote of the show. That's Got a it. nice rhyme right there. That's beautiful. And by the way, I just want to emphasize the fact that the trivia and the scavenger hunt that we were just talking about, you know what's included in those? Something very beautiful, something that people really love, and it's going to switch up all the time, whether it be, you know, this, this week it was shirts from Max Hoops. Some weeks it might be Incredible Smile, uh, Teeth Whitening Kits. Other weeks it might be, hey, the mystery box, like we were talking about. And, I mean, hey, this is our first podcast, and we're going to record this, and there's going to be a lot of people tuning in. So you guys probably didn't know about the live today, but you're going to have no excuse to not know about the live next week which there's going to be mystery boxes and much, much more. So check that out. But without further ado, we'll go into the quote of the show. One that I truly, truly love. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I'm going to share it all with you and let me know what you think about it in the comments below when you see this. Okay. Never wrestle with a pig. Never wrestle with a pig because both of you are going to get dirty, but the pig will love it. Never wrestle with a pig because both of you are going to get dirty. You're going to be filthy. Both of you, you're going to be running around in the mud, wrestling with a pig. You're both going to get filthy, but the pig will love it. Now think about that on a level that isn't actually including a big pink pig the way that you're thinking about it, or maybe brown, like a, like a wild hog or something like that. I don't know what's in your mind. I don't know what you're thinking about, but I know I'm thinking about a big pink pig wrestling around one in, in, in a mud pit, right? The pig is going to love it. But think about it metaphorically and tell us what you think about that. That's a very powerful message, one that I heard recently and I thought about it and I said, wow, that's something that you can really take into the real world and into anything that you're doing at any given time. Never wrestle with a pig. He's going to love it. You're not going to love it. If people, if you argue with idiots, you're an idiot. Never argue with idiots because they're going to bring you down to their level and then they're going to beat you with experience because they've been an idiot way longer. So never argue. And I think that pig, if you're going to get dirty, if you're going to start getting into drama, don't get into drama with people that love drama. There's people in this world and it might not be you, might not be me, but there's people that I guarantee love drama. And the fact that there's people that love drama, and then if you're going to get into an argument with them or create drama with people that love drama, you're not going to be clean. You can't expect to wrestle with a pig and stay clean. Now, how about this, though? What if you're hungry and you're looking around and you've been out in the woods camping for a long time and you see a pig and you have a griddle and you made a fire and you want to make bacon? Then is it okay? 
if you're going to take down the pig, you're going to have to probably wrestle with it. So I would say that never wrestle with the pig unless you need that pig to survive. Then I think it'd be okay to wrestle a pig. I'm just going to say that if it, never wrestle a pig unless you're really hungry and you're craving bacon because bacon is one of the best parts for sure. So let's see, we got somebody in the chat wanting to, oh, somebody else wants to listen in. Okay, we'll let somebody add in. We'll add somebody in. So is there a password on this? I guess there might be, Joey. And the more the merrier, by the way, everybody. So anybody that's tuning in that's not live right now, that's watching the YouTube stream of this, if you ever want to come into the Zoom chats and watch this live and type in the chat, type in the comments, whatever the case may be, and ask us some questions live every week, let us know. Let us know, let us know, and we'll send the links. The password, are you guys ready? It's two, seven, six, three, two, three. That's the meeting password. I think that should get them in. If it doesn't, let me know, and we'll find another way. But let's, let's keep rocking. And it's starting to get dark out here in Oregon. Is this like, is this like what is that? Uh, what's that movie? The, um, where they're, they're doing or, – uh, scary movie they have a camera it's old might be before your time anybody remember that movie when when they're like what was that movie called if you guys can think of the movie i'm talking about when they're they're like out in the desert or they're out in the camping and they're like scary 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 i'll I'll think about it i'll think about it if you think about it before i think about it drop me a note max hoops three Everything I do has three after it because Max Hoops was taken, Coach Minor was taken, and my college basketball number was three. Three. So that might be a trivia question down the road, Brandon. You might want to take note of that one, Sam. Okay, Joey, that my college basketball number was three. I was three on the floor, but number one in the program in their hearts or something like that. They loved me as a walk-on. Here we go. Dylan's wanting to check in here. Let's add them in. Okay, so let's see. Where do, what do you want to go to now, Ponty this? Well, I think now we can go into, because we talked about quotes, we talked about metaphors. So now I think what the people really want to hear, right, is being that you're a former walk-on, I'm a current walk-on, I think that the people would benefit from hearing our stories. And in particular, I think that your short story that people don't know about yet is one for the record books. And the one that's going to resonate with people. I'm going to relocate inside because it's starting to get dark. Starting to get dark. So I'm going to move inside. So I'm trying to think what that movie is. I'll tell you guys in a second. So I'm going to ask my wife. She's going to tell me. So I'm going to move inside. Top, keep it going, Petey. Absolutely. So one thing about me is that when someone tells me to keep it going, I'm going to keep it going. So I'm going to start talking about stuff that's important to me, right? So this is a podcast about walk-ons, a YouTube video channel, whatever you want to call it, about walk-ons, right? So one thing for us that is extremely important is that we can get the most out of everybody around us, right? So one thing about us is that is that the scholarship players who are out there playing significant minutes, right? One thing about us is that we always want to get the most out of them. In the same light, we want to get the most out of all of our viewers, out of all of our followers, out of everybody that's listening to us, because everybody is capable of so much, right? So much more than they even know, including myself. I'm capable of so much more than I know, and sometimes there are barriers that constrain that, right? And my job for myself and for those around me are to see those barriers, first and foremost, recognize the barriers, because if you don't recognize them, you can't get through them. You got to be able to get through them, right? And once you do that, then you can allow yourself to allow other people to break through those barriers too. You help others from helping yourself. You know, when you're on the plane and they say, God forbid something goes wrong, you have to take the mask and put it on yourself first before you put it on your child. There's a reason for that. You have to be able to take care of yourself. You have to be right before you can get others right. Otherwise, it's just the blind leading the blind and there's nothing you can do about that. So that's my words of wisdom for the day. I'm probably going to have more later, but thank you for tuning into my tangent. You have to take care of your attitude first before you help the others. Is that what you're getting at? 100%. 
agree with you fully. Can't, can't beat that logic. Basketball, when did it become your passion, X Factor? Oh, man. So really, basketball became my passion when I was about three or four years old. So even, when, even before that, when I was literally in my crib, uh, my parents were putting a little, little baby basketball in my crib. I was messing around with it, playing with it. And then when I was about three or four, I was watching Space Jam all the time. And I had my little tykes hoop and I was dunking on it. And I thought I was Michael Jordan and I wanted to be the Monstar so bad when I was watching Space Jam. That's when I really fell in love with the game. And um, here I am today, never fell out of love with it. Uh, I think it's something that's beautiful and it takes people so much farther than you realize. Like I'm talking about uh, two, two summers ago or last summer, it was last summer actually, I played overseas with DePaul on a trip in Rome and Paris. Like, we're talking about a sport, you know what I mean? And it takes you so many places. Those are just a couple of the places I've been as a result of basketball. So that's really when I fell in love with it. And I'm so happy I did. I'm blessed. Basketball has been very good to me too. I've been all over the world coaching, playing. I've definitely grew at a young age, loved the game. Just never, never could see my life without it, which is why I'm still involved in it, why I coach it, why I teach it, why I have a basketball organization. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's more than just a hobby. It's a passion, but there is so much more the life than just ball. That ball is life. I mean, I kind of get it, but I'm a much bigger believer and it's a part of my life. It's a part of my life. It's a big part of my life, but it's part of my life. And I'd rather be a good husband, a good father, than a good basketball anything right so that's where for me it's a part of my life it's not defined me but it's definitely something that became my passion when i was a young young guy got dark outside here in oregon moved inside get still get to be excited but the baby is asleep upstairs the the baby is asleep upstairs so that's why i'm but I can still, I can still get a little excited, but the tone just has to take it down a notch. Hey, look, look at that interior though. That's a beautiful home. This is a new light fixture there. Yeah, my, my daughter has some good taste. Yeah, I'm, beautiful home. I'm very fortunate to live in a beautiful home, no doubt about it. Well, let's get to the, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to drop them. Thanks for watching in. We're going to just talk for a little bit longer and then we're going to hop off and we're going to advertise for that next show. So that way you guys can uh, come back and we'll have the magical mystery box and we're going to have some, let's make a deal. You can either have your t-shirt if you are a winner or you can choose to take what's in the magical mystery box. And what's in there? Who knows? That's, that's why it's a mystery. It's a mystery until you choose to get what's in the magical mystery box. And it might be better. It might be worse. But it's mystery. So there's no telling what's going to be in there. What's so life without risks? It's, it's a risk. But that's part of life. Sometimes you have to take a risk. But you also want to make calculated risks. You don't want to just blindly push all in. You want to make sure that when the time is right, that's when you push your chips in. So taking calculated risks is so important in life. So that's where maybe you have a sure thing, but maybe it's riskier, but you have so much more to gain, then it's worth taking that risk. But if it's a big risk for not as much return, maybe don't take that risk. Imagine if you never took a risk, be money. Imagine if you just went through your life just trying to protect what you have and not thinking about the future at all, not thinking about if I take this risk, I might be here in 10, 20, 30 years, 10, 20, 30 days, whatever the case may be. Think about if you never took a risk. There's no way you would be where you are now. If you don't risk, you got to, like I said, calculate a risk, but if you didn't, if I didn't step out and it's hard when you can't see something, but that's what faith is. Faith is believing in something you can't see, which is difficult. It's difficult to believe in something you can't see, which that's why it takes extreme faith to step out and take a risk when you don't know how that's gonna, how that's gonna happen. So I think that's, that's an incredible 
incredible thought is taking a risk. Let's hear, we got some interactions. Um, Brandon wants to know about your first point. First, do you want to know what his first point or his last point? News flash to those listening in that don't know, those are the same because there's only one. One singular point, not one basket, not one basket worth two or three points, one point, uno, meaning it was a free throw to those of you that do not know. So I would be more than happy to tell this story because this is one of the most important stories in my life and definitely one of the top moments of my life so far. So leading up to this, I was on the bench the whole game. I was on the bench because that's where I reside. That's where I'm usually at. It's my place of comfort, right? I'm happy there. Um, do I want to play? Of course, everybody wants to play, but I found comfort on the bench, right? So it's the end of the game. We're up a ton, right? And hey, number 35, get in the game. Punt, get in the game. I'm like, wow, you know, I don't hear that too often, honestly. But every time I do hear it, I'm ready to go out there and represent that name across my chest, DePaul like it's my baby because it is that's the way i look at it it's the place that took me in the place that took me in as, as their own i feel like i have a family here so every time i get the opportunity to go on that court i'm gonna give it my all 100 percent because i should that's what i should do that's how i feel so i went out there i got a couple possessions right um i will be honest with you guys when i got in the game i did shoot a three from the corner and i did miss i did not air ball it was a good miss but I did miss, bounced around, rattled, you know, went out. Whatever, it is what it is. Then I go across the other side of the court. We're in the double bonus already, meaning that any foul means that I'm going to go to the line for two shots. I get fouled, right? Coming back the other way, I get fouled on a loose ball. I dove on the ball. I'm on the floor. I get the ball, which means we have possession. I get fouled. That means I get two free throws. That means it's time for me to get my first collegiate points. So I'm like, wow. So I step, you know, I walk across the court. I'm getting ready to go to the free throw line. I feel like I never played basketball before in my life. I'm talking about I'm there nervous, to be completely honest with you. Nervous, nervous, nervous as ever. So I get the ball, my first free throw. Whew, feels like, uh, like I'm holding an air bubble or something like that. I feel like something, you know, I, like I never touched the basketball before. Do my routine, two dribbles, shoot the ball. Miss, missed the first one. I'm like, oh no, don't tell me I'm finally going to get to the free throw line and I'm going to miss both free throws. Don't tell me, it's not fair. So I get the second one, I get the ball. I'm like, there's no way I'm missing this. I can't miss it. I owe it to everybody watching and I owe it to myself to not miss this. All the work I put in so far, can't do it. Shot the ball, swish. I'm talking about one of the best moments of my life. I hear the crowd erupt. All my teammates are going crazy on the bench, which is what I'm usually doing for them. So it's just sweet, sweet beauty everything about it was beautiful one of the highlights of my life honestly and i will always 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 remember that moment and the way i felt incredible that's an incredible story just of all the work and it wasn't you don't wait to the time when the free throw comes to practice your free throw you wow. gotta prepare ahead you got to prepare ahead and you knock down your free throw and you got your first college point. That's incredible, man. I love that story here. I'm going to share with you guys a little action there, a little action shot. If you guys can see that one. How about that? There he is. Who's that stud? That's Blake step, but the real stud of this photo. I don't know if you guys can see the arrow. There he is with the, taped ankles and the no sock look <laughs> see this, he knew it this guy has braces but that was the style look even blake step has it you know the no socks taped ankle look was the style and the v-neck too the v-neck warm-ups that's powerful those were shorts that were way too big you can see how they're <laughs> scrunched up up here but they're still down over my knees <laughs> definitely too big but that's that's a good one well that's awesome man i love that story of you getting that bucket stepping up yeah the meeting id so there's people want to join in so let's see if i can figure out how, how what's the best way to do that i guess the meeting id 
is always the same for my stuff. So if I'm in here and you guys are wanting to watch the, the code, if you're ready, if you're ready, 750, 750, 569, 6, 8, 6, 7. Bingo, there it is. There's the meeting ID. I think I gave you guys the password, but that's, I don't know if you need a password or not, but it's crazy, it's crazy times. Hopefully you guys are out there enjoying, enjoying life. So we'll, uh, we'll give you one more good walk-on story from my experience as a walk-on. So the story of the bloody shorts is one of my favorite stories. So when I was a walk-on, they used to give me the double extra large tall shorts because you just, I was happy to have a uniform, right? I was happy to have a uniform. Didn't matter what, whoops, I sent that to everybody in the waiting room, not everybody in the chat. Sorry guys. Um, so I was happy to have a uniform, whatever uniform number. Luckily they gave me my favorite number, but I would have worn any number they gave me. So there's that. So I decided, you know what? These shorts are too big. I'm going to, I'm going to go trade them and nobody would trade, but the guys that were the post, the big players, the six ten guys on our team, they wanted my double extra large shorts. So they would take mine and leave me with the triple extra large. So now I'm wearing shorts that were already too big. Now they're giving me bigger shorts. So I go, I think I have it figured out. I think I have it figured out. So I'm going to wear, the blood shorts, the blood shorts, the shorts that are in the training bag for when somebody gets blood on their shorts and they can't keep playing. I put the triple extra large talls in the blood kit and I take the largest. Brilliant, right? I'm going to get to wear shorts that actually look like they fit me. Everything was great until the third game when our starting point guard, Poo Jetter, shout out Poo Jetter. He played today in the basketball tournament for overseas elite i think he had like 22 points he was balling had five threes he was hooping today guy that played with me in college gets blood on his shorts second half of a game at home san diego minor your shorts what my sh my shorts my shorts what my, my shorts we need your shorts. These, these blood shorts are too big for poo. We need your shorts. So a little group of people huddle up around me. I drop trowel right there. Give him my shorts. Clean. They're clean. They put the blood shorts on me. That was the last time I ever got to wear the largest. The rest of the season, they had me in the way too big shorts. But Part of the lesson i was happy i had shorts i was happy that i had the chance to wear a uniform i was thankful i didn't take that for granted i didn't complain i didn't moan i didn't say oh gosh i didn't go to the coaches and say hey i want this uniform's too big for me i get kids now that say that stuff i'm like dude doesn't matter get better like so i was just happy to have a uniform so i think there's somebody let's see do we want to wrap up we've been going for a while now um we can wrap up. This is just kind of a test. We were trying to figure out, and if you guys got feedback for us, Joey, I don't see anybody in the waiting room, but if, uh, if you guys got feedback for us, we're going to just try to get this thing right. This is the first one. We might not have a ton of viewers on this because they might not know yet. They might not know. And this is just a test. We're just trying to get better and learn. And, but you bring this combustible energy to people. This is positive energy. We got three people in here that no P that don't know me that want to be in on this chat room you see so you know that i can go with the flow even though i'm white my rhymes are tight but i don't know <laughs> um but no i'm i appreciate you watching in dylan definitely appreciate you guys joey brandon t oliver i thought that and that's the real one and so i appreciate you guys watching in i'm gonna go ahead and um finish with this. If you're going to walk, walk on. Let's go. If you're going to walk, walk on there. It said, we're going to be back. We're going to be better. We're going to get this thing figured out. We're going to get this YouTube channel going. 
You guys are going to help us. Um, we're going to, we're going to let you guys know. Yeah. We're going to be hyping this thing up for sure, Joey. So you can tell the fighting the line eye, huh? So you got all these social college pages tuning in. So, Hey, appreciate you guys. Take care of yourselves. We're going to stick around for a little bit. We're just going to stop recording so that way we can just chop it up and keep it kind of concise. As concise as two guys with as much passion and energy as me and Pont do. But so, yeah, Pont, closing shout. What do you got? Well, closing shout, I think you said it best yourself. If you're going to walk, walk on in every aspect of what that means, do it. Remember the quote about the pig earlier. Drop in the comments below what you think that means. Never wrestle with a pig because you're both going to get dirty and the pig will love it. Comment what you think below. And at the end of the day, hey, I love all you guys for tuning in. Thank you so much. This is the beginning of something amazing. It's already amazing, and it's just going to continue to get better. So if we're here right now, we're going to be here next week, here next week. And by the end of whenever we're done doing this, which is not any time in the foreseeable future, we're going to be through the roof. So thank you all so much and have a glorious rest of your night, day, or whatever time you're watching this. Whatever time you're watching, make it glorious. I love it. Stop. Here we go.